Tony, would you turn on the lights, please? It's getting dark early today. Clouds, probably. Still three hours till sunset. Well, it isn't clouds. It's perfectly clear. Commando, look at the sun. Is it an eclipse? Well, it can be, Joan. There isn't one due. Well, what do you know? The sun's just gradually fading away. What do you suppose is causing it? I don't know. Might be some unusual atmospheric condition. I'll ask Mr. Henderson to check with the astronomers. Astronomers are still unable to explain this unusual blotting out of the sun, which began yesterday afternoon, nor can they predict how long it will last. Business activities are continuing normally in most cities in spite of the darkness, but farming and other types of outdoor work may have been brought to a standstill. The continuing drop in temperature is bringing sub-zero cold in some of the northern areas. The astronomers are still trying to find an answer. This could be another scheme of the rulers to make Earth surrender to him. Yes. We better face it. What'll we do? Let's wait until the astronomers reach a decision. If they do. I'm meeting with the International Committee tomorrow. We might be able to figure out an answer then. I hope it'll be reassuring. We'll have to give the people an explanation soon. As we go into the fourth day of continuous darkness, tension and panic are mounting throughout the world. Serious rioting has broken out in a number of cities and frantic mobs demanding action from the authorities. Already, the impossibility of harvesting crops is causing food shortages in some areas. And all crops will soon be lost if the darkness and increasing cold continues. In the northern latitudes, freezing rivers have caused the shutdown of hydroelectric power plants, bringing all industries in those areas to a halt and leaving several large cities in total darkness. Everything is working out just as the ruler planned. In a few months, there won't be a living person left on Earth. Yeah. Yeah, but what about us? Don't worry. The ruler will get us out of here in time. This is Baylor reporting from Earth. scared everyone here to death. They think it's the end of the world. It is the end of their world. I'm going to wipe out your entire solar system as a warning to other planets that think they can oppose me. I'm going to send a rocket for you as soon as the cosmic dust blanket dissolves. <sighs> you see, he hasn't forgotten us. Yeah, but when will that blanket be gone? As soon as power failures shut down Commando Cody's generating system. Stop worrying, Mason. You can depend on the ruler. I hate to depend on anyone cold-blooded enough to, to murder the whole solar system. This Earth is only a very small part of the universe. There are other planets. If we get there, Commando Cody might not sit still for this. He'll have to. If he tries anything now, he'll find he's trapped by his own cosmic dust blanket. The astronomers weren't able to figure out any logical explanation. However, they did agree that it could be the work of the ruler. Did they have any idea how it was being done? No, not exactly. But the sun's energy comes from fairly simple atomic reaction. And their thought was, if we can control atomic reaction here, someone else might figure out a way of stopping the reactions in the sun. But if the ruler actually put out the sun, then he's blacked out his own planet, too. Not if it's outside our solar system. And we know he's been operating all over the universe. Which covers a lot of space. In fact, all of it. That's right. But there may still be time to find out what's causing the blackout. With the whole universe to search through? Their base must be fairly close to our sun. 
And there may be some sort of a ray or atomic reaction coming from it, which we can track down with instruments. It's better than sitting here waiting to die. <laughs> That's for sure. Ask him to get the rocket ready. Yes, sir. I'll check the supply list. Give me security commission. Calling post number one. Calling post number one. Post number one. This is Commando Cody. We're entering the rocket area. Clear us with the other post. Yes, sir. Calling post number two. Calling post number two. Post number two. Commando Cody coming in. Everything aboard? Yes, sir. All the supplies have been delivered. I checked them myself. Thanks, Clancy. our dispersal ray. Yeah, our old pal, the ruler again. One of our dispensers could be out of order, but I doubt it. I'll radio Henderson to have dust samples collected. It has been five days now since the sun disappeared from the skies, and the peoples of the world are faced with a terrible, if unexplained, reality of continuous darkness. Food shortages are becoming more and more acute as the impossibility of working the farms has stopped the flow of produce from the rural areas. The entire countryside is now bleak, lifeless, and desolated. 
The ice and snow caps forming to the north are expanding and icy winds blowing southward over those frozen countries are adding further discomfort and damage to an already stricken farm belt. Many families have abandoned their houses to the winds and dust and migrated to the towns and villages, but they find little relief there. Electric and heating facilities are lessening and in most cities lights and heat are rationed, leaving some parts in darkness, other neighborhoods without warmth. Here's the answer. The dust sample from Station 8 has a foreign element added, a neutralizer. Everyone at Station 8 was cleared by security, and they've been working there since the station started. Well, these look all right, but I'm going there to double check it. Stand by till your relief gets here. Thanks, boss. Everything all right? As near as I could tell. He did his usual routine job. Who has the next shift? Ed Williams. I've always considered him reliable, but well, you'll find out. That compound would have to be put in the dispenser at least once a day. And there are only two shifts left. Good evening, Ed. Bell had to leave early, so I took over for him. Everything seems to be doing okay. Good enough, I'll take over. That's all. Put it down. probably told you he'd get you off Earth before it's too late. But he'll never find you in the jail you're going to. A jail is a pretty dismal place to be staying in while you're waiting to freeze to death. All right, you win. A man named Baylor paid me to do it. Baylor escaped with most of his records. But there were still papers enough there to tell us that the rulers putting out the sun was some type of ray machine. He has it set up on planet M27. M27? Which one is that? Here, in the first planetary system west of ours. If that's the ruler's headquarters, it'll be heavily defended. Well, so what? We got enough miniature A-bombs to blast the whole planet if we have to. Are you sure your rocket will go that far with such a heavy load? We can make it. And we'll take off as soon as the compound's out of the dust blanket. And that'll only be a couple of hours. Well, it better not be much longer. We'll all be moving into igloos. <laughs> Commander. We're nearing the dust blanket, Dick. Turn on the dispersal ray. Check, Commander. Check the Nova drive. 
drive, Joe. Dust blanket. There's no sign of heating up. We'll make it this time, all right. Come on, Joan. We'll lay out the course. We're right on course. That's planet M22 we're passing. I'll take over, Joan. reporting from M22. An unidentified aircraft is passing here on a course from Earth's solar system to planet M27. Very well, we'll be ready for them. You suppose it really is coming from Earth? No doubt about it. The only one in the universe who could make such a trip is Commander Cody. What about the cosmic blanket and Baylor? No, Baylor is a fool. Cody must have captured him. Then he'll bomb us. We're not He'll prepared. never get close enough to bomb us. Start a magnetic barrier ray and beam it in his direction. Yes, Your Excellency. far from any field of gravity to fall, so you might as well cut the jets. Yes, sir. You mean all we can do is just sit here? Until someone turns off that ray. Well, it's a sense they're not going to do that. We're right here. That ray must be coming from planet M27, and it shouldn't affect my flight suit. I'll help you, sir. But you can't go that far. You haven't enough fuel. I can get there, all right. But I'll have to gamble on putting the ray out of commission so you can pick me up. I don't like it, sir. It's either that or stay here until we starve to death. Get me one of the small atomic bombs, Dick. Right. Keep your insignia radios open. Right. Be careful, sir. seen on your screen? Yes, it's right where we stopped it. There's another small spot on the screen now. It's too small to be a rocket. Send the lookout up to the tower. Yes, Your Excellency.
Dick. Calling Dick. Yes, Commander. Try your jets. Yes, sir. Hey, we're in business. The ship's moving again. I don't think I've enough fuel to clear this field of gravity, so get to me as fast as you can. We're on our way, sir. Wide open. The tower's complete direct your actions. It'll take weeks to repair it. We have only a matter of minutes. That rocket is headed this way again. We don't have a ray gun that'll stop it. I'll order the rockets on M36 to take off at once. Order your men to barricade the cave entrance. Yes, sir. Dick, Joan, my fuel's giving out. Can you see me? Not yet, but we're coming in as fast as we can. Calling Dick. My jet's out. I'm falling. I see you now. We'll dive under you. Down 20, Dick. Down 20. Compression chamber. took care of the ray machine. Good going, sir. Mission accomplished. Not quite. The people who are operating that tower must be in a cave underneath it. So unless we take care of them now, they'll just rebuild the tower. Stay on your course. We'll bomb them. Aye, right, sir. It's coming over. We'd better go to the bomb shelter on the other side of the mountain, in case they try to land there. No, no, you men stay here. Coming in. Steady. On target. Double-line fur coat I ordered. 
よ。